Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to share with you an amazing testimony and a, a um, oh, an urgent warning to all of you who may be, or those of you who may still be dabbling in the things of the occult. Sometimes we don't know what involves witchcraft, and we think we're playing with innocent things that are harmless. But let me share this with you. This is from one of our regular, one of our, our most faithful, long-term viewers and subscribers. She goes by the code name, Believe. And I'm going to read what she wrote. She titles her testimony, Only the Lord Knows the Future. Not your horoscope. Listen. I started out many years ago reading my horoscope, as many people do, thinking it was a harmless, innocent type of fun. And yet it was fascinating because it seemed to always ring some truth. That became a magnetic pull to me. Also, at the time, I was married to a man who had a drinking problem and an ex-wife who I was very jealous of. Because of my insecurity of the ex-wife, I began going to psychics and also calling those 800 numbers to speak to psychics to find out what my husband was doing behind my back. Long story short, I spent hundreds of dollars to see psychics and even had my phone account have had my phone account shut off because the bill was over $1,000. That's how addicted I became to wanting to know the future <laughs> and what was going on behind my back. When I no longer had the money to see the psychics, who, by the way, have scams to make you keep coming back and make you bring them more and more, I began to de delve into tarot cards, spell books, digging deeper into horoscope understanding. I began to start buying books and on these subjects and was very fascinated by them. Things were not getting any better in my household. My husband was still the alcoholic, emotionally abusing me and my children. Our home was in chaos, bills outstanding, and just negativity all around us. Although there were things going on around me that were falling apart, I just focused on reading the books and learning more about tarot card reading and practicing and practicing it. Soon, I was really good at it. Friends and family were coming to me, asking me to read their futures, and most of the time things would occur as the cards had appeared. One day, a young friend of my daughter's came over to our home. He asked me to read his future. I laid the cards out, and it showed that a male figure had a problem with him and would try to harm him. Not even 10 minutes later, it all played out before my very eyes in my very own home. This young man went to put his arms around my German Shepherd dog, who never hurt anyone before. The dog immediately attacked this young man and bit him in the face. The young man had to be rushed to the hospital and needed stitches, and I found myself in a lawsuit eventually because of it. Another incident involved that I had a small horoscope book in my purse. My purse was in my, let me see, in my kitchen on a chair. Out of nowhere, my purse was stolen with my recently cashed paycheck. We all began having dreams and experiences in the home that were uncomfortable. And our house was robbed again, but it was difficult to understand how it would happen when it was only the family and the household and none of us would have stolen simple things like our own shirts and silly things like that. Well, one day, someone told me to go to a particular church. I had not been going to church and... <clears throat> had figured I would go and see what the big deal was. It was a very large church, 
and toward the end of the sermon, the preacher stood in the, on the altar and said, there is someone here who is doing witchcraft and they need to come forward and repent. Well, I thought to myself, wow, whoever that is should go up there and repent because the preacher seemed very serious and insistent. Well, I looked around, as others did, and no one was going up. Well, the preacher repeated it. Still, no one went up. He said he could not move forward until the person came up and repented. Then he began to explain in detail what witchcraft involved. It involves horoscopes, tarot cards, Ouija boards, anything that is detestable to the Lord. When I heard the breakdown of details, I walked up to that altar and a woman explained to me not to throw the books out. No, she explained to me that those things were disgusting to the Lord. I had no idea. I thought it was all just innocent fun. But then things began to make sense. The woman told me not to throw the books out, but to burn them, and never, ever delve into that stuff again. Well, once I began to cleanse my home and life of those things and fill that void with Jesus, things began to change. The change was amazing and so rewarding. I gained the strength to leave the man who was an alcoholic, although I tried to help him for over seven years. But I began to see him for the leech he truly was. My children began going to church and learning about Jesus. Things really became clearer and brighter. I must say that horoscopes were like a drug to me. They were an addiction because I was intrigued by them. But now I know better. I know that they can sometimes seem accurate because a lot of the information is coming from the spiritual realm, but from demons, not from good sources. So I would tell people, do not be fooled by what may seem like an innocent, an innocent form of entertainment, horoscope, psychic, tarot, card reading, games that tell the future. The only source to know the future is Jesus. The Bible is the only book that we should look to for answers. All the answers are in the Bible. And the Holy Spirit does speak to us, but only through our understanding and belief on the Son of God, who is Jesus Christ. I have told many of my friends, stay away from horoscopes. Some think I'm just a fanatic, but it is not to be played with. God bless you, my friends. Pray and ask the Lord to show you what you need to know. God bless you. And she thanks me for sharing the message. Your sister in Christ, Sister C. Listen, you guys. Stop tiddlywinking. Stop playing. Stop Stop fondling with the unknown things of the dark side. Stop experimenting. Stop exploring. You want to explore, you explore God. You explore God's supernatural. That's fascinating. But when you deal with the dark side and you start having times when you're in the bed and you're being pinned down by some, some invisible force and you feel this demonic paralysis coming over you, or you feel evil entering your house, or things start going cuckoo in your life, and you can't understand it, it makes no sense. You, have, you may have opened the door to many curses. See, the demons are given permission. Now, if you forbid them, if you're born again, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got the blood of Jesus, you're covered, you're protected by God. Your life is dedicated to the Lord. 
in obedience and righteousness, then you have a covering and you have weaponry and all that to work with. But when you are out there, you're like a child without a home. You're like a kid out on the streets, just just at the mercy of the streets and whoever wants to play games with you and rape you and use you and abuse you and sell you and do whatever and beat you. You have no covering. You have no protection. And you have given evil permission in your life. You've given it permission. You have given it the key to your house. You have given it the key to your life the key to your health, the keys to your children. It's like giving a pimp or a dope dealer the key to your house and you ask them to watch your kids while you work overtime and tell them they can do whatever they want in your house. That's what you're doing when you play with the occult. That's what you're doing when you play with witchcraft. You cannot afford to dabble. Your children can die from it. It's very serious. You have no idea how much Satan hates you. The hate, the sadist, the, the, oh my goodness, he loves hurting. He's worse than an abuser. When you see a, a person who likes to beat people and hurt people and maim people, imagine the devil is a million times worse than that. And you have given him rights to your life, to your household, in your business. You don't want to do that. So that's your warning. I'm, I'm going to stop talking because her, her story said it for itself. I'm just trying to make it a little clearer for you. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Repent. Ask God to forgive you. Turn your life around. Ask people who are Christians to help you live a holy life. Read the Bible. Get to know God for yourself. Pursue him in prayer. Don't be phony about it. Be who you are. And ask God to get in there where you're hurt, where you're confused, to put your life right, to make your to make your heart whole, to screw your head on straight, help you make healthy decisions, wise decisions, protect you from yourself, and to teach you. Anyway, God bless you. Please, please take heed. It's a beautiful warning if you listen. Amen. Amen.